Well, Miles is attempting to become the grill master. Grill <laughs> master? The grill master. Yeah, she's cooking herself some chicken here. Yay. She marinated in barbecue sauce, right? Barbecue sauce. Yeah. And of course, she had her own special seasonings. Yes, there. of course. I don't. I. I I don't tell the I don't tell the other ingredients for. <laughs> yeah. Now she's cooking all this chicken and it's just the two of us. What's up with that? <laughs> I know. The other the two chicken legs for our dinner tomorrow or lunch. Yeah. But we will not eat all these one, two, three, four, four pieces right here. We're not going to eat that tonight. I'll probably only eat, Miles will probably have a little bit. And I'll just maybe have one, like that one right there. But, oh, that was hot. <laughs> but, uh, no. Nah. But, as, as many, for the people who have watched our videos, we always make on the grill, we, we cook in bulk, and then we eat it for the next couple of days, right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be good. You got another? Oh, let's go. Them two look good. Yeah. You should take the bigger pieces and move them to the and switch them around. Because that area that they're in is hot. And that's why they're cooking the way they're cooking. Look, see what I'm saying? See how they're cooking good. Okay. You should take them two and put them where them two are. Because them two big pieces, see how see how good it's cooking? That's just my only thing. You do it, you're the grill master, so. I, I just put this in here so that this is not our dinner. I, I chopped this one back of the knife so to make the... Put that one right here, right around here. It's this hot one? right there. Yeah, it's, look, it's really hot in that area right there. That's mm -hmm. kind of like the cold area. No, because it's blowing the wind. Yeah. You know, I, I really don't want to sound like an ass, but I am. <laughs> Why? No, it's just people always ask about budget, budget, budget. You know, and I mentioned it all today about a budget. And I have mentioned it before in the past about budgets. You know, the only thing I could tell you is if you have a hard time maintaining a budget, and you're gonna be on a set amount of money per month, whatever that amount's gonna be, I don't know, that's your business, not mine. And you're having a hard time budgeting now what you have. I really don't know what to tell you, man. And I, even for people living in the Philippines now, man. You know, I've always been told by successful people. Yeah, see, I, I, I run on the theory is I don't I, I don't try to act like I'm rich or anything like that because I'm not, all right? But you try to network yourself around people who are very successful because then you get tits and bits of how they became successful and what you need to do, or what you could do to get to, to the point. Now, somebody my age, it's kind of like late in the game, but when you're younger, you know, you network yourself, man. I mean, don't be phony. Don't be uh, a pain in the ass. 
because a lot of your people are very successful. They're more than willing, willing to give you little little secrets here and there, you know, unless they're an asshole. But most part, like I said, I kind of networked myself around successful people. I didn't kiss their asses. A lot of them I was working for. And I always observed to see what they were doing. Or, or, in other words, when they started talking about, you know, finance and stuff like that, I listened. You know? And I never tried to act like something I wasn't. They knew who the hell I was. They knew that I was a worker. You know, and they knew I was a hard worker. But, you know, yeah, you, you do have people that got, like, two, three, four credit cards. They're all maxed out. They're barely being able to make the minimum payment per month. <clears throat> and they, they, they don't understand why they can't make it. But there was a person that gave me the best advice in the world. He said, you take your monthly income and either you live off 50% of that or you live off 75% of it and the rest you put in the bank. But, if you're at the point now where a day after payday or, you know, you're broke because of your bad decisions on finances, maybe you need to rethink about things, man. And a lot of guys come here and they're in that situation, they come, they come to the Philippines where they owe a lot of money on credit cards, they have loans or whatever, they come here and and they get so they get sucked in, you know, with the with the uh, the party life, I guess you would call it. Is that what you call it, Miles? The party life. Party life. Yeah, the party life. And they just they start missing one one payment as far as credit cards or whatever loan payment. And then they miss one month, then two months, then three months. And I'll tell you, man, credit card companies and banks have more power than they than you think. And you're not there. You're not in the States. You're, you you got to call them. But they could put a freeze on your account. And they could start taking money from you if they, if they take it if they decide to take you to court. Don't say it doesn't happen, because I know plenty of guys, well, I know two guys that that happened to. They thought, well, I'm here, and nobody's going to bother me, and they started missing payments, and then all of a sudden, next thing I know, their, their check, their, their, yeah, their check, or whatever you want to call it, gets deposited in their account, and they can't get to it, because their, their account's been frozen. Credit card companies, banks, loan companies, they got more power than you think they have. And you're here. What are you gonna do? You know, you gonna fly all the way back home to go talk to them? Let's be real about it. See, before I came here, I had one credit card. Okay, I paid that off. I paid that off real, real quick. I cut the card up. I closed the account. I was done with it. You know, and I, any other outstanding bills I had, I, I, which I didn't. My truck was paid for. We're talking about a tractor, not not a pickup truck. That was paid off. All my debt was paid off. But see, I really never had that much debt, man, because I, I learned in 2008, man, I learned my lesson real fast when everything crashed. I learned real fast. And you just can't come here with a, you know, with that, with that thought of a champagne diet on a beer budget. Because let me tell you, a lot of guys come here. Well, I got, I got fifty thousand dollars in my account, and I got four or five years, and then I'll collect Social Security. Do you really think that fifty thousand dollars a year is going to, or fifty thousand for four to five years is going to last you? Or maybe three years. Do you really think it's going to last? No. Especially if you go to the heavily foreigner populated areas. Stuff's expensive there. Very, very expensive. 
What's that? Always going, going out or go to the what, fancy restaurant, hotels, gathering everywhere. Yeah. I doubt it. But you just watch yourself, man. That's, a, that's the only thing I can tell you. You just got to watch yourself. I can't tell you how to spend your money. The only person can tell you is you. You're the only one that knows the truth, how much money you have, how much money you're going to have per month, everything. You're the only one that knows this. Nobody else. Nobody else. And that's why I don't like giving people a budget, you know. I know how much I spend. I always have money at the end of the month, always, okay? Because I ain't, I don't have a champagne diet on a beer budget. I made my mistakes. I made my mistakes in my life, but I learned from them. And I picked myself up, brushed myself off, and I moved on. And I don't blame nobody, man. That, that's another thing, you know. You can't blame people for, for something you do. You got to blame yourself because you know what something? You keep on going around blaming people, you're, never, you're not going to learn from it. You're just going to have one excuse after another. That's the only thing I can tell you about a budget, man. If you just come over here and you're not going to be collecting whatever your pension or Social Security for four or five years, man, and you only got $30,000, $40,000 in the account, that ain't going to be enough. I'm going to tell you right now. That will not be enough. That will not be enough. Some people, a lot of people don't want to hear, and I'm pretty sure I'll get comments. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I only been living in, living in the Philippines going on four years. But of course, I have, me and Miles set ourselves up, man. We bought a house. It's paid for. I owe nothing on it. Everything that I have in this house, including my motorcycles and cars, it's paid for. The only thing I got to pay for is food once a week for the week. Yes. Bills, the, the electricity, the water, and... The internet. Do I really need internet? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. And you, yeah, you'll say, oh, I don't need it. Yeah, you do, man. You need it. But I just wish good luck to everybody who wants to come here. And I'm, I'm not trying to sound like a downer or anything like that. You just, people need, you, need, you need to be honest with yourself, man, and saying, am I really ready to come to the Philippines financially? That's all you got to think about. Am I financially really ready to come to the Philippines to live? So that's my thought, and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.